Oklahoma, and we are currently where they filmed the drive-in scene, which you have seen two years ago when I was here. Still looks basically the same. And we are here with the second remaining Jeep truck. And uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and who you are and, and what you do. All right, I'm Tim Stegner. I own uh, Tim's Body Works in Guthrie, Oklahoma. Uh, we acquired this truck several years ago. Uh, it was a theft recovery when I got it, so it was in pretty uh, you know poor repair. Uh, I acquired it from a gentleman that ironically owned the other surviving truck that he bought directly uh, at the time of the end of filming here in Oklahoma and then sold it to a broker that sold it to the Gatlinburg uh, Movie Car Museum. Uh, many years later, he found on eBay this truck, bought it, flew out to California, drove the truck back, drove it to work for several months and it got stolen from work one day and disappeared. Uh, it was returned to him with no wheels and tires, a blown motor, bad transmission, some pieces stolen off of it. Uh, and that's how I acquired it. Uh, from from there, you know, I, I had always known the movie was special to me because I was around when some of it was being filmed in my little town and got to see bits and pieces of it. So I got the truck back and got it running with a, you know, salvage yard motor and uh, some scrap wheels and tires I had laying around and had driven the truck and it drove pretty poorly so I just parked it and I didn't do anything else uh, with it for many years and I was contacted by Linda from the uh, Wakita Museum and she found out that I still had the truck so I took it to the festival they had for the 20th anniversary and kind of realized how big a following Twister had and how special it was to a lot of people. So we kind of launched a plan to restore the truck and you know, as, as preserve as much as we could on it. So uh, that kind of kicked that in motion and now we've ridden on the truck the way it is now. We rebuilt the motor and the transmission. Most of the drivetrain's been gone through. Uh, repainted the truck, it was awful rusty and uh, the bed was you know pretty, pretty wiped out. So uh, trying to get all that done for uh, you know last year and then uh, we had an open house at my shop so right about the time we we're getting ready for this and we're kind of putting the finishing touches on the the truck the Dorothy comes up in an auction so we were able to actually acquire uh, Dorothy so as a uh, number two Dorothy that actually was in one of the Jeep trucks um, so that has kind of completed the whole package for us but if you want to go around I'll kind of show you some of the things that are unique to this truck um, like right here since we're at the bumper there's a number two stamped in the bumper and what that recognizes is that this was the vehicle number two in in the paperwork so uh, how they actually use that I don't know but I know the the red Dodge trucks had its own designation so does every one of the Jeep trucks has a number two stamped in it so they had four trucks uh, that were complete trucks and one truck that was part of a truck mounted on a trailer. Uh, that truck was scrapped. Two of the other trucks were dropped, so they were also uh, scrapped, uh, to the best of my knowledge. And then the two surviving trucks. So uh, that's, that's kind of that there. Um, there's a tow bar mount, which would be kind of hard to see, but it's up under the bumper. Um, all this here with these bolts and that I believe they use for the cable pull uh, in the ditch scene there's also we can come around over here probably the best example we've got the movie mud you know which is basically styrofoam they painted you know and then made it look dirty which I almost removed when I first acquired the truck because I didn't realize that I thought it was real mud now you can see it's aged enough you can kind of see through and see the styrofoam but uh, definitely has a good effect. And on the uh, subject of the ditch scene, while we're talking about the fake mud and the uh, tow bar that was on the front, we believe, um, when we were talking to Barry, the owner of the property uh, where they filmed the ditch scene, uh, you may not know this, they, um, they actually dug out the ditch and put concrete all on the bottom of the ditch and then put mud on top of it so they could have traction for the filming that they did where they actually drove the Jeep. Oh, yeah, and he, he said that 
you can put concrete there as long as you tear it all up when you left and they did they said they came out there and and plowed all that concrete up and hauled it all away after they were done filming wow so it's pretty pretty ironic that they had you know so many different setups of how to do the ditch scene and then the fake mud even though they had real mud yeah. but they wanted to make sure that it stayed in the fender wheels yeah so it was yeah pretty cool definitely so here's one of the other things so there's a camera mount here for interior shots they had some sort of apparatus which i have not seen but this mount can be unbolted and bolted in four locations under the cab you see there there's plates welded in and of course uh, you know when we did it we tried to uh, put the flaws back in the stripes as they were for the movie i actually made templates of uh, all the stripes before we took them off so i could put the flaws back in We have more movie mud here, and there is another camera mount that's uh, kind of all by itself. It's back here in the back, this aluminum pole. It's the only one there. Also, I haven't ever seen uh, the mechanism they had mounted to that. So, as you can see, there's our, our Dorothy. That's the newest acquire for the project. Yeah, and it came from uh, Planet Hollywood, you said. Yep. All right. Been hanging up in their rafters for many years. And uh, you want to tell us a little bit about the uh, the roll bar differences that we were just discussing earlier? Yeah, so that's uh, one way you tell the difference in the truck. So this roll bar has been built uh, to replicate the factory roll bar. The factory roll bar, uh, this has been bent like on a muffler tubing uh, bender. The factory roll bar is uh, consistent, so it's uh, a little heavier metal, probably more like a drill stem type, uh, you know, fabrication. But it, it comes back a little further and has a more square down angle so you can plainly see the difference and of course you can see this shoddy welds on this you know that's not a not something the factory built there you go. here's the newest newest edition we got joe's signature right here on the glove box so i'm pretty happy about that we just got that this weekend got a picture of uh helen hunt with the truck so that was really cool we've tried to preserve everything on the inside kind of as it was i've partially redone the door panels um, had to put a new floor mat in it because that was that was gone but the seats are still original the dash is original a new headliner because that was that was falling apart and you said uh, it was missing the CB radio when you got it yeah so and the radios were gone um, when I got it that's another difference you can see because this is the Cobra 25 LTD classic and <coughs> there are two different ones and I don't remember specifically now the other one but it only has three where this has five knobs so it's a little narrower uh, when I got this truck though it did still have this CB mount in it so that helped me uh, determine that this was the truck that used this CB uh, so I, I think the majority of the interior shots are done with this truck and the trailer mounted truck all right so here underneath this truck was originally born red so we uh, did replace the hood on this because this hood had been damaged too badly um, so we did repaint the bottom of the hood and spray in red in places around here and polish up some of it uh, just to kind of keep it as original as possible even though the you know the red inside looks terrible I think but um, it's authentic we did rebuild the motor and uh, I took liberties to paint the motor blue as this year uh, could be the last year that we could have possibly had the blue motor I just think it looks a lot better than the black so I, uh, I did that myself and did put fuel injection on this truck to make it a little more user-friendly one that had a lid on it um, which has also been taken apart so nobody really knows exactly what all that is but there's a there's a group that has a ton of information on these things but this one's constructed differently than the rest of them anyway. The way this is uh, pop did seem here on this uh, line. Can you see that? So this is the only one that's built in this way. The rest of them have a, uh, a weld. And actually the aluminum on theirs is much heavier than this. So the framework inside is different. Um, every Dorothy is a little different from, from each other. Um, mostly, you know, 90% uh, of them is the same. But like I said, this one's completely hollow inside, and this is the lightest probably of all the Dorothys. It doesn't have casters, 
Uh, so it's uh, that I'm aware of. I think it's the only one that doesn't have casters. Uh, it it sat in the truck that was on the trailer. That was a cutaway truck. So it had a cab and part of a upper bed. And you know how it was mounted. I'm not real clear on that in the truck. Uh, but they used it for all the shots where you'd see them film through mm -hmm. the front of the truck. So they had they had like a big. Uh, like tarp over the front half to like shadow the windshield out mm -hmm. and then they would film through it and you could see this really good in those shots and that's this Dorothy for sure in that that Jeep truck so that's the only Jeep truck I think this Dorothy was in was the trailer mounted one which would make sense why there's no lid there's nothing inside because it doesn't matter right because you would never see it from from that perspective yeah, I do think it had just a lid bungeed on it mm, so but not like it yeah none not of the, the actual for lid whatever reason none of the lids actually uh, made it except for the Dorothy 4 so mm. that was the one that went up for auction in 2016 so it's the only lid that we know of and the lids are pretty thick I mean they're probably five eighths or maybe three quarters of an inch thick they're really really big um, and I know one of the guys in the, the group is trying to reconstruct the, the mechanism that opens the lid, which would be really neat. Uh, but a couple of them, uh, I think, have a shelf in them <coughs> that would have held, you know, the instruments uh, that, you know, they made with the Pepsi cans mm -hmm. in them. So mine doesn't have that. I've, I've seen, uh, I think, pretty much all of them in person except for the... The one, you know, the the one that sold in 2016, and maybe maybe another one that we don't I don't know actually the location on it. But I've seen most of them in person, and there are some differences in all of them for sure. I'm you know missing components here. There's still there's a uh, apparatus that goes here, which is a real weather piece that's hard to find, and when you can, they're they're pretty expensive. But I haven't seen one come for sale yet. Um, there's also like a Doppler dish that mounts on the back of here. Um, I believe that's what it's for. That I'm not clear if it was actually a real weather instrument or something that they built. Um, so I've still got to add some of that stuff to this thing in the future. So, you know, one other thing is, you know, so we haven't done the tailgate yet, and I haven't uh, fully made the decision if I'm going to restore this tailgate or leave it as it is. Uh, so, you know, you can see on the inside the red paint still from it and all these chips. But another thing it kind of has is it preserves the uh, dimensions for these stickers. There was four of them across the tailgate that, you know, said MSC for Muskogee State, State College, uh, which actually, you know, didn't exist. So there is a town of Muskogee in Oklahoma, but they never had a college. Uh, so that was all fabricated for the movie.
Jeep stands yeah. for just everybody else's parts. Yeah. Yeah, AMC using everything. You got a yeah. half breed GM column. Yeah. You got a AMC. This is an AMC 360. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And you got the 727 for flight. For flight. Does the uh, four-wheel drive still work on this? Yep. Wow. I know the uh, AMC Eagles had the same four-wheel drive selector. Um, right. Well, so I did uh, actually change the transfer case. This particular one came with a, uh, a 229, which they don't make a full rebuild kit for. And I'd been uh, on the waiting list with uh, BJ's Off-Road to have, uh, have one rebuilt. I guess they couldn't find a, a donor. I wasn't going to ship mine off because I didn't trust that it wouldn't turn up. So I uh, I ended up swapping it and upgraded to a 231, I believe is what I ended up putting in it. So I've still got the original transfer case for this. But I'm really unclear if I'm ever going to put it back in because they, they got a lot of problems with them. And there's a hairline crack in the case of the other one, which is why I wanted to swap it. Apparently that's what happens when the chains go bad. Mm. Like a gear drive case is trying to blow itself apart. Like chain drive case actually tries to pull itself together. And there might be some people asking, so I'll ask. Does the CB radio or does any of the stuff work with the cameras? Have you so, tried any of it? So I've never tried the cameras. Um, obviously I've never tried the phone, but yeah, all this other stuff works. I haven't wired it back up now. But I had it working before, so I will wire that stuff up. I ripped the, the wiring on this thing looked like a five-year-old had done it, so uh, I ripped out all the non-original wiring. Uh, it had a lot of gremlins in it before anyway. Constantly ran the battery dead, so getting rid of all that. Now I don't have a battery draw, so I will rewire everything in the, the proper fashion when we have time. I appreciate you showing me Joe's truck now that it's all been fixed up because it's been two years since the last time I've seen it. If anyone needs any body work or anything in the Guthrie area or in Oklahoma in general, how can they get a hold of you? Uh, well, we, they can contact us at stegiesgaragegut.com, timsbodyworks.com, or twistertruck.com. And uh, unfortunately, you won't be in Waukita this year. Will not. Um, but maybe next year if things work out, but we'll just have to see. Um, but you are having a car show here at your uh, shop here well actually it's gonna be at the park here in Guthrie uh, okay. September 14th uh, it's a Guthrie road celebration um, so it's a, a long held car show that we've been in charge of for the last uh, five or six years um, so the twister truck will be there and not at Wikita uh, unfortunately so I I wish we could make both but there's just not gonna be a way so well that's pretty much gonna do it so we're gonna head back to Arkansas we got a five and a half hour trip or so and it's gonna be really late by the time we get back and then next weekend we have the next episode to film where we're gonna see some of the other things from Twister and I'm not gonna spoil it but it's gonna be pretty cool so stick around for that <laughs>